Tina Huffman from Greenhouse Studio, and today we're going to talk about all things air plants. Air plants are one of my absolute favorite indoor plants. In a lot of ways, they're the perfect house plant. There's no soil, there's no mess, and in my book, that kind of makes them the perfect green decorating accessory. Before we get started, though, take a second and hit the subscribe button down below. Okay, now let's go over some air plant backstory. I don't know about you, but I have to know the story behind everything. It doesn't matter if it's a plant, an antique, or whatever it is. If it's coming into my house, I want to know about it. It helps make it more meaningful and, as opposed to just visual. The genus for air plants is called Tillandsia, and it's the largest genus in the bromeliad family. There are more than 600 known species of Tillandsia and all kinds of hybrids. Air plants are native to Central and South America and even a small part of the southern U.S., like Florida and Georgia in the south, where you might know this one as Spanish moss. Air plants are divided into two categories, mesic and xeric. What puts them in one or the other are the size of their trichomes. Trichomes are these raised hair-like structures all air plants have on the surface of their leaves. Trichomes allow air plants to extract moisture and nutrients that come their way from the humidity, rain, or whatever comes down from the rainforest canopy. Essentially, trichomes are what allow air plants to be air plants. Mesic tillandsia are native to humid places like Central and South American rainforests. The leaves of mesics are a deeper green and smoother than xerics because they have fewer and smaller trichomes. They also prefer filtered light. Xerics are from drier, more desert-like climates. They have larger trichomes and more of them than mesics, which gives them their gray-green appearance. Xeric trichomes also reflect sunlight to help protect the plant like sunscreen. So the more silvery gray it looks, the more sun and heat it can take. This is true of other gray-green plants. When you see leaves like this, you know the plant is heat and drought tolerant. Air plants are also epiphytes. This means they like to live on a branch or a tree trunk or a rock instead of having their roots in the soil because they don't want all the moisture that comes from being in the soil. Epiphytes aren't parasitic and they don't cause any harm to the plant they're attached to. Air plant roots, in fact, don't even need to be watered because their sole purpose is just to attach to whatever surface they're on. So you don't even need to worry about watering them. So where to put your air plants so they're happy and healthy? Tillandsia prefer bright filtered light. Keeping them about 12 inches away from a window works, or you can use a full spectrum artificial light. And not surprisingly, the xeric types like this guy, they can tolerate the most sun. I do keep a few of my xerics farther away from the window up to about five or six feet away, but it's in a south facing room that gets a lot of natural light. So just try to keep them close to a bright window. And if you're using artificial light, the day length should be set to about 12 hours. Air plants like temperatures in the range of 50 to 60 degrees Fahrenheit at night and about 80 to 90 degrees Fahrenheit during the day. In other words, they're going to be pretty happy in the average indoor home environment. What doesn't make them so happy in the average home is the lack of humidity, especially the greener mesics. But overall, air plants prefer humidity in the 50 to 70 percent range, so it's not too far off from the average indoor humidity level, which is often around 40 to 60 percent, but it's not enough for them to survive as air plants without supplemental water. Of course, this also depends on where you're located and what time of year it is. So, for example, Philadelphia in winter indoors is a whole lot less humid than Philly in summer, right? and always keep any air plant or any house plant away from heating vents, which will dry them out. Air plants don't need or want a lot of water. Again, a big clue is the fact that they don't need to be planted in soil. Be careful though, just because your air plants will sit there not complaining on the windowsill can make it easy to ignore them. And if you don't water them, then over time, they'll start to slowly shrivel up. So keep an eye out for shriveled leaves or brownish leaf tips and margins. This means they aren't getting enough water. That brings me to the next point of how to actually water air plants. People fall into two categories on this one. Some are misters and some are soakers. And I'll lay it out from the get-go, I'm a soaker. The reason for this is just time. For your air plants to get enough moisture, they need to be misted every other day or even every day. And that's just not gonna happen in my house. So I'll take you through how I do actually water. About once a week, or really more like every two weeks or so, I'll fill up the sink and put them in upside down. This way, water goes more to where I want it to go, on the leaves, and it helps keep water away from the base where it can collect and cause rot. Then I'll run some water over the top so the backside of the leaves gets wet too. Usually, I only let my air plants soak for maybe 10 minutes. 
A lot of air plants will be fine with soaking for longer, and I used to let mine soak overnight, especially because I would let them go so long in between waterings. But after doing that, I had a Xerographica and two Streptophilus right at the base, so I really pulled back on that one. So I get them all wet in the sink, but I only soak them for a few minutes. And remember how I mentioned their roots are only for attachment? It's true, so you don't need to worry about watering them. Once they're done, I shake them upside down thoroughly for the same reason, to help get any water out of the base. Then I set them on a towel to dry for at least a couple of hours before putting them back to wherever they normally hang out. Air plants don't need much fertilizer since they collect the water and nutrients they need from whatever falls from the sky in the forest canopy. Most air plants will survive just fine without fertilizer. I don't fertilize my air plants that often. When you are fertilizing, you need to be careful your air plants don't get burned because they're extra sensitive. For that reason, I do recommend using an air plant specific fertilizer. It's already been diluted to the right strength and so you don't need to worry about burning. Plus the NPK ratios, the nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium, they've already been calibrated to exactly what air plants need. This is the air plant fertilizer I use. You can apply it weekly. I usually just give them a spritzing after watering. And here's another tip, never fertilize a thirsty plant. It doesn't matter if it's an air plant or if it's any other kind of plant. You wanna make sure your plants are well hydrated before you fertilize to prevent burning. So if you're using a general fertilizer, which you can do, you just need to dilute it properly, uh, check to make sure it doesn't contain any copper or zinc micronutrients because those are both toxic to bromeliads and air plants. Also urea or fish emulsion, you can't use those either. The reason is they need a bacteria that's naturally found in soils in order to break down into a usable form of nitrogen for the plants. And since we don't have soil, that doesn't help us. If you wanna know more about fertilizer chemistry, like what elements are needed for specific plant functions, then I recommend reading my air plant blog post linked below, where I go into a lot more detail about all this and just more detail in general about air plants. When you're watering or handling your air plants, be careful because their trichomes can sometimes get damaged. It's not so noticeable on the green mesix, but on the silvery xerix, when the trichomes get damaged, it kind of stands out. If you look closely at this xerix, you can see these little bright green scrape marks. Those are damaged trichomes and those won't ever go away. So just be careful with them. And this is also why I don't dry them upside down, which could also help prevent water from collecting in the base, right? The smaller, lighter ones would be fine and they could handle it. But the bigger, bulkier ones, like some of your larger xerographicas, or say this Tillandsia stricta, it would get damaged. The trichomes would be damaged and these fine leaves would certainly get bent. If you see brown leaf margins and shriveled leaves, that means your air plant is thirsty. First thing to do is water it and then you can trim the brown parts off with scissors. Angle your trimming so it kind of mimics the shape of the leaf. What I don't want you to do though is get an underwatered air plant confused with natural leaf abscission or base rot. So here's the difference. If you flip your air plant over, you'll probably see the leaves on the outside of the base are shriveling and dying. This is natural. As the air plant produces new leaves from the center of the base, the old leaves on the outside of the base die. So when those leaves are ready to be shed, you can gently pull them off the base. When you see shriveled leaves much beyond the bottom of the base, that means your air plant is underwatered. If you see leaves at the base that are dark brown on the bottom, but the top part looks green, that probably means you have base rot. So again, don't soak them too long and shake them upside down afterwards. Okay, here's one of the most fun parts about air plants, styling and displaying them. Since air plants have no pot or soil to fuss with, I think they're the most versatile house plants around and you can display them in all sorts of fun, creative ways. So have a good time getting creative with styling ideas around your house. So that's it for caring for your air plants. They really are one of my favorites. They're beautiful, unique, and super easy to care for. Thanks for watching. And if you enjoyed the video and found it helpful, please give it a thumbs up and a subscribe and I'll see you next time.